years ago there was a very popular song called the Song of Roland that takes place in the 700s. At this time there's an emperor called Charlemagne who reigns all over a people called the Franks living in what we now call Germany and France. And he's a Christian so he wants to Christ in all of Europe which is quite a tough mission because up in the land we now call Denmark that's a lot of heathens and down in the land we now call Spain that's a lot of Muslims that's a lot of Jews. Charlemagne doesn't like this. So he decides to send his army down to rid uh, Spain of these infidels. But it comes off to a rocky start. Because at the very first battle, an entire column of Charlemagne's army gets eradicated. The last to die is the very stubborn leader of Roland. He did not want to call for reinforcements despite the pleas of his soldiers. But as he's the last to die, with his last breath, he calls out for the reinforcements. Charlemagne arrives at the scene and sees everybody, including Roland, dead. And he falls into despair. He's no longer the leader of his people. He just cannot think straight. And at this point, there's a Danish soldier of fortune who steps forward and saves the day. A man called Uji, who later on got the name Holger in translations. And he says, we have to avenge Roland's death. This is not the time to fall into despair. This is the time to be very, very aggressive. So he attacks the biggest, ugliest, strongest fighter on the opposition side, and he actually manages to kill him. Everybody rallies behind Holger, and they attack and conquer the city of Saragossa. Now, unfortunately, this is the 8th century, and when you have conquered a city full of Muslims and Jews, you got to destroy all the mosques, the synagogues, and forcefully baptize the population. So that's exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and all over Christian Europe, Holger became a hero. Although in Europe they would also forget about him again. But in Denmark we remembered, and we kept on telling the story, and we kept on adapting the story. So when we've got new enemies over the centuries, well, Hulk has been fighting against them. On numerous occasions, he waged war on the Swedes, obviously. <laughs> um, after the Reformation, it was all about fighting the Catholics. And there was even an opera made of Holger going on a crusade into the Arab world where he ends up marrying an Arab woman and giving up the crusade. So, these things happen. Yeah. <laughs> now, the most prominent example of a readaptation of uh, Holger the Dane story came during World War II. When we got occupied by the Nazis, all sorts of pamphlets and stories were talking about Holger the Dane. She tried to fight on the Danish side. And there were some quite uh, ambitious young men who took that calling seriously. They founded a, um, a resistance group called Hulk of the Day and carried out sabotage actions and assassinations in his name. They were the most prominent resistance group. The most famous Hulk of the Day story, the story that all Danes recognize and a lot of Danes think since the original, is just 200 years old, was written by Hans Christian Andersen. And this fairy tale Hulk is a traveler who's so tired after his travels, he just want to get back to his love Denmark. So he walks all the way back, and for some reason he walks to the furthest part of the country, he walks up to Elsinore, where he finds Kronborg Castle. And with the last of his energy, he goes into the casemates, where completely exhausted he sits down on a rock. Then Anderson describes how he takes off his shield and put it on his side. He folds his arms and rests it on the sword, and falls asleep. And while he's sleeping, his spirit keeps on growing till it reaches the rock he's sitting on. And there, according to Anderson, Holger, he will remain in sleep until Denmark meets a warrior again, and he will rise and fight on the Danish side. And that's something we've integrated into a speech. Whenever we face a foreign enemy, an external enemy, or a foreign football team, we talk about Holger, he has to rise and fight on the Danish side. He's still sleeping, which explains the last World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason that goes over much better than the points was on the day. <laughs> now this statue is obviously based upon the fairy tale of Hulk of the Day by Hans Christian Andersen. Actually the statue itself is more like another Andersen fairy tale. It's more like uh, the ugly duckling turning into a beautiful swan. What's ugly duckling about this figure you see here? It's 1907. A hotel owner in Illinois who decides I want a bronze statue of Hulk. And whenever you make a bronze statue, you get a plaster version that's left over. And that's useless, it's a piece of trash, it has no function anymore, you will throw it away. Except this one time they thought, wouldn't it be fun to put the plaster down into the casemates where Holger is said to be sleeping? 
not to entertain anybody, because Chromebook was closed to the public back then. This was just a one-off joke. This was just something like cool little thing you could do that only the sculptor and a few other people would know about. <laughs> 103 years have passed. This bronze statue still stands two kilometers away at the parking lot of the Central <laughs> But it's almost forgotten the vast majority of Danes do not know it exists. Whereas this statue has become a national icon. Just like there's an iconic Uncle Sam figure saying, I want you to join the US Army. This is the Holger Dane uh, icon here in Denmark. It gets 200,000 visitors each year. The fifth most visited tourist attraction in Denmark. That's very good going for something that was just put here as an afterthought. It was just a byproduct originally. It's the ugly duckling turning into a beautiful swan. The original beautiful swan died of old age, though, because the climate down here in the casemates it's not so welcoming. And plaster, that's a very weak material. So by the mid 80s, the guys that were standing here saying, This is Holger, a mighty Danish warrior. If we're ever in trouble, he will find on the Danish side. But please don't touch him, he's about to fall apart. <laughs> we couldn't quite keep that up in the long run. So when Kronborg turned 400 years old in 1985, we replaced the plaster statue with the concrete statue that you see today. It has the same measurements, but this statue we expect will stand for centuries. Now, for now, we 